<clears throat> Give me one second, everybody. I'm just pinning this comment. And I'll wait for my colleagues and we'll get started. I need to find a better way to actually do this. But right now I don't have it. So we're just gonna do that like that. Okay. Walker is here. Alright, start it. Hello everybody, um, my name is Corey, I use he and his pronouns. Um, in the past few months, the Walker Health Community Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts to social media platforms. Um, we cover various topics regarding HIV and AIDS, sexual health practices, um, STIs, access to care, social determinants of health, and public health interventions. Of course, the community health team is always here to educate and support. Um, today I will be discussing um, interpartner, intimate partner violence um, in same-sex same couples in, in the LGBT community. Okay, domestic violence in, in, in the LGBT community. Because the majority of domestic violence awareness movement has forced, has always been focused to, on to heterosexual relationships, members of the LGBTQ community have large have largely left out of the, have been largely left out of the movement. However, recent research shows that the LGBTQ plus members um, fall victim to domestic violence um, at equal or even higher rates compared to their heterosexual counterparts. Um, nine quick statistics and, and about domestic violence in the LGBT community. Number one, um, 43.8% of lesbian women and 61.1% of bisexual women have experienced rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner at some point in their lifetime, um, as opposed to 35% of heterosexual women. 26% of gay men and 37.3% of bisexual men have experienced rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime, in comparison to 29% of heterosexual men. In a study of male um, same-sex relationships, only 26% only of men called the police for assistance after experiencing near lethal violence. In 2012, fewer than 5% of LGBTQ survivors, survivors of intimate partner violence sought orders of protection. Transgender victims are more likely to experience intimate per um, partner violence in public compared to those who um, do not identify as transgender. Bisexual victims are more likely to experience sex sexual violence compared to people who do not identify as bisexual. LGBTQ plus black slash African American victims are more likely to experience physical intimate partner violence compared to those who do not identify as black or African American. LGBTQ white victims are more likely to experience sexual violence compared to those who do not identify as white. LGBTQ victims on public assistance um, are more likely to experience intimate partner violence compared to those who are not on public assistance. I don't really understand what public assistance has to do with it, but that's a statistic. So brought to you by Types of domestic violence affecting the LGBTQ community. 20% of victims have experienced some form of violence. 16 have been victims to th victims to threats and um, intimidation. 15% have been verbally harassed. 4% of survivors have experienced sexual violence. 11% of intimate violence cases reported in 2015 um, reported a weapon being involved. Unique elements of abuse in the LGBTQ plus community. 
There are several aspects of intimate partner violence, which can be unique to the LGBTQ community. Outing or threatening or threatening to reveal one partner's sexual orientation slash gender identi identity, identity may be used as a tool of abuse or violence in relationships. May also be a barrier which reduces the likelihood to help seeking for the or help help seeking um, help for this abuse. Prior experiences of physical or, or psychological trauma, such as bullying and hate crimes, may make LGBTQ victims or the victims of domestic violence less likely to seek help. Transgender intimate partner violence. Transgender individuals may suffer from an even greater burden of intimate partner violence than gay or lesbian individuals. Transgender victims of intimate partner violence are more likely to experience threats or intimidation, harassment, and police violence within intimate partner violence. Specific forms of abuse occur within relationships where one partner is transgender, including using offensive pronouns such as it to refer to their transgender partner, ridiculing the transgender partner's body or their appearance, telling the transgender partner that he or she is not a real man or woman, ridiculing the transgender partner's identity as bisexual, trans, femme, butch, or genderqueer, etc. Why does it matter? A lot of people may ask. Domestic violence is not limited to heterosexual relationships and can affect individuals of all sexual orientations and genders. Within the LGBTQ community, intimate partner violence occurs at a rate equal to or higher than the heterosexual community. LGBTQ individuals may experience unique forms of intimate partner violence as well as the distinctive barriers to seeking help due to fear of a um, of discrimination or bias. All the response of LGBTQ victims of domestic violence is gradually improving. The LGBT community often is, if often, met, met with ineffective and victimizing legal responses. 45% of victims do not report the violence they experience to police because of the, they, they do believe it will not help them. Furthermore, Members of the LGBT community may be denied assistance in domestic and domestic violence services as a result of homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia. Barriers to seeking services and receiving assistance. Um, several barriers exist to addressing the LGBTQ plus community. It's an LGBTQ plus community. Um, Interpartner moralities. These include um, beliefs that domestic violence does not occur in LGBTQ relationships because, of course, people think that they're um, the same sex, so they're just having a fight instead of it being abuse. They're completely wrong. Potential homophobia from staff or service providers from non-LGBT domestic violence victims that may they may come in contact with. So a lot of times. They're afraid that, you know, they're going to be discriminated against, of course. Um, lack of appropriate training, so just not being culturally competent. A fear that airing the problem among the LGBT community will take away from the progress towards equal, equality and fuel anti-LGBT um, Q bias. So basically they feel like that by saying something, they're going to basically fuel people thinking that LGBTQ are violent. The lack or um, the lack of or survivors being uh, unaware of LGBTQ LGBTQ friendly assistance resources here in Washington D.C. We actually have a um, LGBT unit called the Blue Unit. So um, if you are ever in trouble and you don't feel safe meeting with other police officers, you can actually ask for the Blue Unit, and they have to call them to decide. If there's ever an incident where you are, um, have been abused in any type of way, or you know, just you just don't feel safe being involved with a police officer, a certain police unit, you are able to ask for the blue unit. But before we go, um, we just want to give you a few reminders of COVID nineteen and the vaccines. If you've already gotten the vaccine, then congratulations! Um, you're taking a really important step to prevent yourself and communities from illness. 
there's different variants of, uh, around the United States that are selling at the moment, and it's totally understandable why you want to keep wearing your mask. The vaccine is not 100% effective, and there's not really any ways that are out there right now that can tell if someone has been back, truly vaccinated or not. So definitely keep staying alert. If you um, haven't been vaccinated and you're looking for an appointment with Walker Health, has COVID-19 vaccine available. Everyone ages five and up um, are eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine. Please reach out to us at 202-207-2480 to make an appointment. For DC residents, you can find more information on COVID-19 vaccine walk-ups and eligibility at vaccinate.dc.gov or by calling 1-855-363-0333 to track the speed of COVID-19 vaccination lines. Um, you can visit um, coronavirus.dc.gov. You're welcome. Um, forward slash don't wait. For Maryland residents, learn more about the vaccination, Maryland vaccine distribution process, and schedule a vaccine vaccination appointment at covidlink.maryland.gov or by calling 855-634-6829. If you live in Prince George's County, you can visit the vaccination portal. Montgomery County, the same thing. Um, or you can call 240-777-0311 to schedule an appointment for Virginia. Um, if you're looking for a vaccine, you can um, learn more about the Virginia vaccine distribution process and schedule a vaccination appointment at vaccinate.virginia.gov or by calling 877-829-4682. If you haven't been vaccinated and you're not looking for an appointment, please continue to make sure that you're following CDC's guideline for mask wearing and quarantining, social distancing, and the like. It is very important um, that you consider the vaccination, discuss precautionary measures, with those around you and be careful and mindful about mask wearing, mask wearing and keeping your distance. Um, especially when you're not uh, sure if a person has been vaccinated or not. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Whitman Walker and check our website at Whitman-Walker.org for the most up-to-date information on our services. For more COVID-19 resources and general Milwaukee services, please call us at 202-797-4439 for some of our programs and um, follow some more of our programs in Whitman Walker family at Real Talk DC underscore and at No Filter DC. Um, if you all have any topics or anything that you would like me to cover, um, I am really open to it. If it's something that y'all just want to discuss, you think it would be a great discussion because I actually want to have, um, I want to have a day where I'm actually just having open discussion. People are able to just come up and we're just able to just have a dialogue. You can come up and share stories or whatever. Um, I think I might do that next week. I might create a day where we are, um, because since it's Pride Month, we can do actually probably months about the over actually today. But um, we can just have like an open dialogue. We can share our coming out stories or whatever. Because I want it, want it to be something that's a little bit more interactive. Yes, my, yeah. So we can definitely do that, um, May. Uh, make up with May. Um, we can definitely do that. I would love to have just like a just day where we're able to just have open dialogue you know you can share what you would like to um and we can just have discussions about things um because you know i would love to hear from from people that that like you know that watch it will actually it will be very helpful um to have real live experience of people that have been through certain things like this or you know whatever people want to share it will be helpful for people to hear that Right. Yeah, it's definitely so much better for for a person to like actually hear um, something that's real, rather than it being rather than it being something like okay, we're just having a discussion about it, or I'm always being informative. I would like to hear from from you know just hear from someone. But everybody have a great Tuesday and a rest great rest of your week. I'll see everybody on Friday. Um, I'm out.